Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning, dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Welcome to Spooky Hot Takes. I'm your Lodge Master. With me as always is Brother Bieschke. Yo, what up? Brother Lucas in the back. It's not benign. Malignant is a title of a movie that mm-hmm. we saw. And it comes <laughs> as part of a long line of these spooky adjective movies where it's like insidious, malignant, sinister. Like what... It, is that scary? Is that cool? I don't. I don't know, guys. Yeah, it's probably like focus group or something. <laughs> I thought the title should have been Gabriel, but that's just me. Uh, well, before we get into it, Bishy, watch that shot. Real short one from Rotten Tomatoes. Paralyzed by fear mm. from shocking visions, a woman's torment worsens as she discovers her waking dreams are terrifying realities. Period. Nice. Ooh, nice. I kind of like that. That's yeah. really good. Because you don't know, it, it's not giving the whole game away. Yeah. And you That's, know what's crazy is, yeah, if you really were going to do a proper synopsis, you could just blow it and just overwrite it and it could sound as long as, what was that long one we read recently that was like going on forever? They're all fucking long. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good one. That's a good, solid, succinct elevator pitch. And even though we've already warned at the beginning with our standard warning, we are just going to blow all the twists yeah. or whatever twists we see fit with this. Now, so. before we get into it, did, did all of all three of us here, because we didn't watch it together, did, did we know anything about this going in? Did, what were our expectations going I in? I just saw the trailer. That's, all I, that's Same. all I knew. I saw the trailer but had forgotten it. But then Brother Justin texted me he's like i'm watching malignant and there's nothing really that you need to see here and then he revised that by the end of the movie he's like just finish malignant it's a must see so i'm like yeah. oh shit okay brother got- <laughs> brother nay did about the same for me he was my like, bff yeah. also said it was hilarious <laughs> yeah we're getting some feedback we're getting some grassroots feedback <laughs> when i was watching this movie the first scene seems like it's a tv show like, it seems like it's a 90s TV show. The production value is weird. Like, it's slick. It's, it's really new. slick. Agreed. Yeah. But I feel like it was like a sci-fi original that they'd play around Halloween or something. Yeah. I mean, look, I I stuck with this movie because, you know, it's a pandemic, <laughs> folks. The Delta yes. variant is still out there. So there's really not much to do or, or any places to go. So when it started right off the bat, the cold open, which was kind of like the Jurassic Park cold open where it's like, shoot, mm-hmm. huh? You know, but instead of a velociraptor, it's and like, it was 1993 <laughs> as well. A patient, mm-hmm. I was kind of like, oh man, yeah, with that sci-fi TV quality, uh, I was just like, I'm kind of out. I don't think I can do this. And no name actors whatsoever. I, like you I feel think the, you, the woman's name was Annabelle in real life, which confused me because I was like, did they make a movie they called Annabelle? Several. Annabelle they're movies. casting real Annabelles and non Annabelle movies. The like, snake is eating its own tail. Where here. will it end? But yeah, so it, it the movie doesn't really explain everything up front, and so the the first act is kind of like standard boilerplate pop boiler boiler something. <laughs> Boiler, boiler room. <laughs> boiler maker. Yeah. Boiler room. Yeah. They they give you a, a quote unquote shocking intro where something's going on mm-hmm. and something, something, Medius race. something malignant's happening. Then we flash to present day and yeah, it's this house. I was watching it with the lodge mistress. She's like, no way this grody couple lives in this super nice immaculately appointed shabby chic house you know like, seattle victorian not even close because like these main characters ugh, like <laughs> yeah I, that was the other hard thing for me so like i didn't know what this was about and you go from the crazy jurassic park yes. cold open to this domestic violent drama like abusive relationship yeah 
I mean, it's just bad vibes. You're just like, oh man, it's malignant it's, vibes. These are the people yeah. we're hanging out with, and then and then it just gets even more violent. Fishkey, what did you think of this? Did you feel well, like it felt like a TV show? I did know one other thing. James Wan, who the last film we covered of his, I walked out of Aquaman. So I was like, <laughs> oh man. So I was like, I don't know about this guy. Did Aquaman we cover was before, Aquaman? Was that we did. We, we did cover in a hot take oh, uh, Aquaman long Aqu ago. Aquaman was trouble. <laughs> it was a very um, unessential hot take but, but james wan is hugely successful yeah just yeah and he's got money. and he's got Minus a ton, touch he's got a ton of money here and he's throwing everything like it's like every subgenre of horror They're he does the like, conjuring movies right or at least he started that yeah mm -hmm. yeah and now the conjuring they're calling it the conjuring universe like oh yeah i think he wanted to start a universe with <laughs> starring the real life annabelle but this one's got ghosts serial killers invisible man mind house, prisons mind torture prisons. supernatural jump scares uh, slasher. H hp lovecraft creatures coming yeah. out of your back slasher psychological terror it's all there yeah yeah and shadows i will say this for love and light i liked the concept of a villain that is moving backwards like the mm -hmm. arms crack around and you're moving backwards i like it in theory because let's just say it this woman has a twin growing out of the back of her head and her abusive husband cracks her head against the the wall and it wakes up gabriel which is its name her malignant twin her malignant her twin teratima or whatever it's called and so whenever some killing goes down to take revenge against the the unscrupulous surgeons who wanted to <laughs> cut the cancer oh, out. Oh man, that's right. There's a plot to this. Every yeah. e her whole body crinkles around and it goes backwards so the tumor in the back of her head becomes her face. And this is like a dark man type figure like swooping around, <laughs> jumping around, very acrobatic. I like that concept on paper, and I like the fact that the back of her head becomes the front of her head. Well, I just want to ask, like, because it beca that becomes revealed. Like, yeah. did, did everybody know that? I, no way. I did. I you did. I was, okay. I was too out of it. I was. High. I was. I was too out of it. I was just like, and I was paying attention, but I was still like missing crucial things or something because yeah. I was like, wait a minute, yeah, like. Well, to okay. me, there's nothing else that could possibly be happening. It's like. Okay, we know something's going on with her head. She has long, a long, thick, you know, mane of black hair that's covering whatever's going on in the back of her head, constantly bleeding. Yeah, she's got she's got a sister who also notes that it's bleeding. Does not take her to the doctor because then the that. movie would be over. But I didn't know why. I wasn't ahead of it. I was like, why is her head? Yeah, bleeding? I was pretty slow. Uh, <laughs> I knew that it was her. I mean, the I knew, entire time. I knew it was like an evil twin, but I thought it was separate from her. I, I did not. Yeah. I thought it was a real imaginary friend wow. who was somehow invisible or something. So it quote unquote worked on you guys and yeah. you still seem bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I um, no, I wasn't no, bummed, but as as but, it went along, I I livened up. I was okay. like, because it does it does get crazier and crazier it as it goes, and, and this, so by the very end, you're just like just in awe of its craziness. What my what my problem was is yes, it does get crazy in that more things hap are happening on screen, but there's a point where Gabriel kills one of the surgeons. And the the surgeon has many tro trophies displayed. And one of the trophies is the surgery symbol sword with the snakes going around it. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel fashions that golden sword oh, into right. a murder. You forgot about that? Yeah, I forgot about <laughs> the Freddy, the Freddy glove, Jason machete, and it just, action figure accessory. I forgot about that. It says excellence on it, which is funny. And it, it <laughs> that part is like everything about the trophy is shot like it's a comedy or it's like Evil Dead. It's like Ash like fashioning mm -hmm. his you know boom mm -hmm. boomstick or whatever. But the movie plays everything pretty straight like all the mm -hmm. actors i don't know if they're just like trying to remember their lines Off or the what cw network man totally oh. but it seems to like half know what it is you know it starts real cheesy like oh shit this this is like a throwback to like some kind of straight to video full moon entertainment piece of shit mm -hmm. which i'm into yeah but then it's it plays it pretty straight it's pretty serious 
if this had pushed that humor or that winking or that like throwing the kitchen's everything in the kitchen sink into the mix, I think it would really would have had they really would have had something here. But as it is, it's like stuck in the middle. So mm. you were having a blast, Fishki. By the time the twist happened, I mean Well, maybe because for me it wasn't a twist. I was yeah. like, finally. Yeah, wow. No, I was like I know the Lodge Master and the Lodge Mistress figured this out way before me, but <laughs> this is pretty cool. Like the, the the old video of the little animal coming out of the, the back of the kid's, you know, skull and all yeah. that. Like all that. And I, I just started laughing by that point. Okay. I was just, and I was laughing pretty much throughout the rest of the film. Like the prison. Um, yeah, I think we should summon the salad dragon for yeah. the prison Oh, scene. shit. The Salad Dragon. A scene in a movie that is so bizarre, baffling, or transcendent that it instantly justifies the price of admission. Or Reese Witherspoon's leafy transformation in A Wrinkle in Time. So this was the first Salad Dragon that I had to look up on Wikipedia because... It's a sweet. It's a sweet. because Because I was like, wait a second, did I miss something? And that something was... Was Gabriel like this Matrix trained, you know, assassin, <laughs> you know, like this Jason Bourne? Right. Because I was like, I, I really need to know why the malignant twin is just able to be this like, you know, Darth Maul Jedi fighter that can like anticipate. What moves did you and, Google and- <laughs> to find that out? Gabriel Matrix <laughs> trained? I mean, the reveal of Gabriel emerging from the back of her head and the two little arms poking out and that face <laughs> like it's, it's amazing hilarious. it's amazing yeah. it's you can tell that there is actual practical effects going on mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of other digital tomfoolery going on but those little twiggy arms and that face are amazing yeah. and it's purely because it's tactile and you can feel it with your eyes you know like there's nothing like it there's no replacement for that. And then the removal surgery is in, incredible. It comes directly after the reveal. Mm-hmm. We see them cutting <laughs> cutting sweet little Gabriel out. And then there's the jail cell scene where our hero is in jail. She's getting harassed and bullied. Yeah. And Gabriel takes over. She crackles her arms backwards and just lays waste to everybody in that cell. It is kung fu. She's ripping throats. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I felt the new movie knew what it was at that point. It, it, I, like, but what of, if? But what if the whole movie no, was the, sprinkled with that? No, that's you true. Know? That's like, true. It, how great would this have been? The the wackiness could have started, and the reveal of Gabriel, I think, could have started quite a bit earlier. I agree. That was my big note. Was yeah. like, man, I wish I knew this up front because then I would be with it on a, such a better level. Because yeah, for that first half, I'm like, what am I watching? Why am I watching this? And yeah. then boom, it just it, hits third fourth gear because there's so much more you could do when you have a character that's kind of sharing brains with your lead <laughs> right there's so much you can do psychologically yeah. and physically like but, but it, they we, sit on it for so it, long we sit on it until mm-hmm. the last half hour mm-hmm. and then the last half hour just goes bonkers the and, music is pretty hilarious there the score is basically an interpolation of where is my mind by the pixies yeah Ugh. which i never uh, which, i was like when are they gonna just <laughs> totally go into where's my mind they They don't they never do what like that Uh. song that song is almost as played out as white rabbit in any vietnam movie or fortunate son while you're watching the name going to to vietnam like you can't you you just can't do it anymore like even when even when fincher quote-unquote owned it and used it for fight club i was like Mm, you're pushing it that's the end of that <laughs> yeah whenever whenever movies do that it always reminds me of american gigolo when they use blondie's call me as the score which mm. i love yeah so i always try to like give it the benefit of the they doubt just riff on it throughout the entire movie <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this movie needed like it needed when she was doing the jail cell massacre we needed the full maybe just do like a big symphonic blast version of yeah. it you know like I don't know. I have notes for this movie on how you can punch it up and like really live up to its potential of wackiness. And what bugs me too is that this movie's on HBO Max. It, it got, I think it got a day and date release in theaters and on HBO Max. And 
people are just watching this. Like the audience for this is very wide. Mm-hmm. And they're going to watch this and be like, oh, shit, that's the craziest movie I've ever seen. Oh, my God. And I'm just like, oh, but it could have been crazier. Yeah. Well, the audience, <laughs> the audience score. Oh, shit. Well, uh, should, should we wait till after our bones? Yeah, to we'll wait till after our bones to talk about that. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> you, you've probably already seen Malignant. If not, it's a laundry folding movie. When you watch the scene. You should be folding laundry, folding, folding, oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, I would say you know <laughs> I, you don't have to pay too much attention no. in the first hour and fifteen minutes. Once, once the twist happens, then you might want to perk up and 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 watch and if, the rest. And if you and if you haven't seen it and you're still listening to us spoil it for you and you still want to see it. Yeah, just take the laundry out. You'll be fine. When she starts going to prison, if she starts getting locked up, start paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Bef- yeah, before that, it's kind of like Hoobie Halloween. It's just in the background. <laughs> it's, it's the Hoobie of this year. It's the Hoobie. We should do an annual Hoobie Halloween award yeah. for <laughs> the most inessential background movie that you could possibly put on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it this still tops Hoobie, but barely. Let's go with the malignant bounds. Lucas, once you figured out whether or not Gabriel was <laughs> Matrix trained <laughs> and the movie ended, what did you want to bestow upon it? Yeah, I uh, saw it at home uh, in my living room, screening room, uh, HBO Max, and I really wish. Ditches. I know. I really wish. I had seen it on a Tuesday discount night mm-hmm. at the yes. uh, AMC, you know, late show coming from MacGuffins yep. with like a malignant mixer, you know, some sour drink yep. with booze that's, in it. That's the way to see it. That's the only way to yeah, see it. Yeah, because uh, just, yeah, um, <laughs> it didn't it didn't hit as hard uh, at home. So I'm going to give it two and a half bones. Oh, um, shit. But I am very much looking forward to the sequels to this, right? Oh, because, because the movie ends with with Annabelle, you know, uh, I think her name's Madison in the movie, but yeah, casting Gabriel, her malignant twin. Uh, now he's been kind of cut out of her back into this mindscape prison. Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, you haven't seen the last of me. Like, I will get you yeah. my pretty. And she was like, yeah, and I'll be ready for you. And I'm just like, oh man, this is like Nightmare on Elm Street, you know? Like, they're going to have so many subtitles to this. They should yeah, make yeah. a movie called, the sequel called Remission, where literally he doesn't show up and nothing happens <laughs> and everything's fine. She has a baby and like yeah. raises it. Yep. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I definitely look forward to the future uh, sequels. Wow. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Two and a half. Two and a half from Lucas. Okay. All right. Brother Bishke. I'm much on the same page with Lucas. Um, you know, the first hour 15, I was probably sailing it like two bones. A lot of cheap <laughs> thrills. Yeah. A lot of uh, very slick um, horror, and I was just like, yeah. You know, I w- the other problem was I was having issues with my Amazon Fire Stick. So you I have just have a Fire Stick. Wow. Yeah. What? Well, I have an Apple TV that's older. Anyway, I won't go into it at all. I ended up watching it on my I, iPhone. I think I which, know what you're getting for Christmas. Which, uh, no, I'm getting a new Fire Stick. It's coming on Friday. Oh. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I rescind Wait, that. You watched Malignant on your iPhone, Bishki? I ended up watching it on my iPhone because no. I, I just got pissed. What? I just got pissed. Oh, Not even an iPad or a laptop? No, I, I just was pissed and I just watched it on my iPhone. And I was just mm. like doing other things while I was watching it. But that, that's why the twist got me. And you couldn't see, dude. No. Bishki and I are like fire and ice in terms of like screen size, <laughs> fire stick and ice. Yeah, not since uh, Tom Hanks is Greyhound because I watched something on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the twist got me. I'm I'm kind of a sucker. I I, I get roped in and I yeah. and I just don't see it coming. And after that, it got ultra silly. Definitely got boosted in the last act. <laughs> I'm going to give it, with Lucas, two and a half bones. Two and a half. You boys are beaming so much love and light at this stupid movie. I mean, I laughed. Come on, you got to laugh. All like, right. Yeah. I mean, I laughed too, but it was too little too late for me. Listen, you kind of have to see it. Justin was right. The first three-fourths, I'm like, what? And then 
by the end, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Gotta see it. Gotta see it. Yeah. And, you know, if you've if you've listened to us, you know, salad dragging our way through the years, this one's a keeper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's definitely it knows it knows what it's doing during that salad suite. And it's worth the price of admission. It might be worth double the price of admission. I have to give it that. But I ain't going above two. I didn't know what I was going to give it until now. And you guys have brought me from one point five to a two. Mm, nice. That salad suite is leafy it's fresh yeah and but i gotta give it to it's it's right down the line and i am not looking forward to any sequels or any malignant expanded universe well, i think coming this should just be a thing that <laughs> happened but anyway <laughs> what do you what do you think that audience gave it oh shit i see okay my theory is the audience at home it blew their minds and they had a great time. I think the audience gave it 92. Lucas? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I second that. Yeah, Not it's going to be high. Not even close, what? y'all. What? Audience thought it was a little too silly, gave it 52%. Wow. Wow, that is divisive. Critics gave it 76%. Huh. Uh, wow. So I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> Something to man, ponder. Man, people are tough these days. People are tough, yeah. Well, I think it was the silliness because the twist... Either you're with it or you're not. But here I that. am ordering more silliness. Am I out of touch? I don't know. Yeah. No, I would have preferred more silliness myself. Like, I don't need the domestic abuse drama no, to set yeah, it up. No. Um, but, but it's yeah. not really silliness I'm ordering. It's it's extreme, like, what the fuckingness. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know? Like Sam Raimi's Drag Me yes. to Hell, which is great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Sam Raimi, please make some more horror movies. Oh, man, Malignant that'd be sweet. Two. That'd be nice. But we're going to get Malignant 2, and we're going to be here for it? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I might have to I might have to put a moratorium on these uh, James Wan expanded universe movies, just yeah. like you guys do with Aquaman superhero movies. Although, although, although maybe out. we owe it to Wan to see the sequel in a theater on a Tuesday disc. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like okay. Maybe, maybe we up the ante a little bit somehow. I will yeah. commit to that tonight. Awesome. That's a hot take, y'all, for Malignant. Malignant. Love and light to you all. Love and light. Later, Gabriel. What happened? Standard boilerplate, pop boiler, boiler something.